and I'm back. After a week hiatus, I miss you guys. Welcome to the show. This is your daily rundown on you. Why? 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 It's happy hour. Kirby has been nominated for a Grammy. Hold on, hold on, slow down. Cur- like the, the purple blob? The, the little blob pink blob, Kirby. yep. The, the wow. pink ball mascot in Nintendo. You know, they were like, yo, throw that Kirby soundtrack down there and let him get a Grammy. So I wonder if he's going to show up and swallow the Grammy and transform into a music note weapon. Oh, I, that I would I be wonder. funny. <laughs> So, Yo, they should do that. They, they should, should really do, do that they as should. an animation. He they swallows should. a Grammy and it turns if into like it. a music note or something. If he yeah, wins yeah. It, if he wins. It. <laughs> um, so the most pre- prestigious music award show in the United States mm-hmm. isn't about pop music. This is about the actual best arrangement. So Charlie Rosen and Jake Silverman are up for best arrangement and instrumental on a cappella for their arrangement of Meta Nice Revenge from Kirby Superstar. Really? So yeah, really? They, they, they nominated this song up for best arrangement, instrumental or acapella. Awesome. They need to have Meta Knight show up too. So Kirby swallows it, turns into a note, and Meta Knight hacks him and turns him back and takes the takes the <laughs> <and falls> off. <laughs> That's that what would we be need. funny. That's what we need. Yo. Yo, that's funny. Yo, happy Turkey Day, Fall Paladin. Thanks for hopping happy in. Happy Turkey thank you, Day. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's what we need. So we have something for Nintendo. So Nintendo about to get a Grammy, dog. Nintendo about to get oh a Grammy. God. Go Why am game. I not surprised? This and then they're going to delay the release of all the games for another year because that's Nintendo. <laughs> of course. Exactly. That's exactly so the, the course. Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo is up for a Grammy. You think it's odd there? <laughs> you know what's really right. odd? NFTs in parades. Hold on, what? How? Wait. Explain. So, Macy's explain this again. It's auctioning off Thanksgiving Day parade NFT. So I guess people okay. are taking pictures and doing digital uh, images. Right. And they're they're of the Macy's parade and they're selling them off as NFTs. So I mean, it makes sense, you know, trading cards. So you make right. NFTs of all the trading cards. So they even have uh, a creepy elf one they have showing off. So the retailer Macy's is auctioning off mm-hmm. 10 one of a kind NFTs to mark the 95th anniversary, 95th year <laughs> of the Macy's Thanksgiving parade. I bet they about to make uh, all kinds of money off of this. Yo, yo, somewhere in the chat, Defunk is clenching his fist right about now. <laughs> I know the, the funk. I love Defunk. He's stopping he himself right NFTs. now. He's right. like, I'm about yeah. to buy one of these. Either that, or he's loaded up a high-powered rifle and going uh, to a, a position of <laughs> a position of high. He's in a bell tower somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at Macy's for doing it, jumping into the NFT craze. Why not? I mean, shoot. Um, if there's a way that you can like turn turn a quick buck off of what could be just hype, it could be. I mean, it, there's, it's it's fun hype to me. You know, I'm not the one dropping like tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars on these NFTs. But if you're, you know, slick enough to come up with an image that can't be replicated and can sell it, and you make a pretty penny of it. You know, by all means, I, I wish you the best of luck. It makes it kind of fun. It's it's, it's like um, NFTs are like today's uh, a modern day baseball, football, basketball cards. You know, it's, it's like digital cards. It's the next level. Only you can, you know, use any image and not just be limited to one specific sport. The Animation Guild uh, Guild's writers are ready to negotiate for pay parity. So they realize that they're not making as much money as the live action stuff. So achieving pay parity with the Writers Guild of America rates in a top concern for TAG because the system as it exists now treats writing for animation and live action as different jobs. And they're saying, look, animation brings in all the money these days. And every live action movie is full of CG animation. We need to okay. get paid the same amount of money. Okay. You know? Yeah. You know, they I, should. I write for The Simpsons. What do you mean? Why do you mean the, the, the Seinfeld writers get more money off from than me? We've been around 35 seasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Simpsons yeah. Yeah. writers yeah, that, are like, we're just about as old as Seinfeld. <laughs> as Seinfeld big facts. Actors. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and especially with, with, with this, this, you know, relatively larger shift in interest as far as western uh content watching is concerned shifting towards a a larger um 
a, a larger percentage of animation being brought to the screen, mm -hmm. then that, that compensation should be adjusted as such. Yo, like they are, they're coming up with amazing, amazing stories. Yeah. Uh, I can't, I can't go on enough about how dope Arcane is. I, I can't go on enough. And those writers, those writers should be uh, paid probably. the same amount as, as anybody, as anybody else but that makes on, on, on any type of platform. Even feature yeah. films, like look at Disney's feature film list, Netflix's feature yeah. film list, soon yeah. to be Apple's feature film list of all animated properties. Animated mm -hmm. properties, the Lego movie. Man, the greatest movie of all time. Wow. <laughs> okay, the UK did something smart. The United Kingdom did something smart. You know what they did mm -hmm. very smart? What's that? They banned <laughs> default passwords. You can't just have some of the default passwords in there. The bill called the Product Security and Telecommunications Infrastructure Bill, PSTI, would require mm -hmm. unique passwords for internet connected devices and would prevent those passwords from being reset to universal factory defaults. So you can't just have password as your password anymore. Or one, two, really? three, four, five, eight. Well, that's good. It is good. You know, it is I, good. I kind of think we should just get rid of passwords altogether. Yes, I agree with you on that. I just think the technology needs to catch up so that. Uh, 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 Two, two uh, factor authentication. Just get rid of passwords altogether. I'm so over the password thing. We can get yeah. rid of all passwords. Let's get rid of passwords. I think, I think we're only like five years away for it for it being a, a, a totally done thing, you know. So it should be it should either be face identification or or, or your thumbprint. No. Or send a message to another device or to an email account. Yeah, you know, two-factor authority, two-factor two verification. Two-factor yeah. authentication, yep. Mm -hmm. So Dark Horse requires Star Wars. This is comic book news, you all. This is rare. We haven't done comic book news here in a while because we have Origins Illustrated. Okay. But Dark Horse re reacquires Star Wars all-age comic devices. So what that means is from 1991 to 2014, Dark Horse Comics has churned out more than 100 different Star Wars titles. They right. basically established the universe. Which J.J. Abrams threw away and made all that shit legends, which I, I'm not going to talk about that, dude. I'm not going to talk about right. it. He ruined Star Wars forever. Um, mm. The movies. It adapted yeah. novels, helped to find the old Republic era, and blazed in much of the universe, both before and after the movies. And helped define what used to be called the expanded universe. Used to be called. Right. Because J.J. Abrams right. ruined that shit. Now it's called <laughs> Legends. Because it's not canon. Cause he, could, yeah, Cause he couldn't make a movie maybe. around all the great legendary stuff they created in this universe. You know, lack of creativity, man. Um, mm. He's great at filmmaking. Nobody says he's a great creator. He's great at filmmaking. He's a brilliant filmmaker, yes, but yes. you know, some Nobody some of his choices, filmmakers some of his creators choices, quite, all the time. They create yeah. films. They don't create stories. Yeah. There's a difference yeah. there. Writers create stories. Yes, I agree. And a good I director directs those writers to create better stories. Yes. I can tell you this much. A great writer can can make a great director. Yes. A great director can never yes. make a great writer. Yes. Because <laughs> I've seen so a lot of great directors way. with crappy, crappy scripts. They make crappy <laughs> yes. movies. I don't care how brilliant of a director mm -hmm. you are. You are given a shit script. It's going to be a shit movie. Yeah. It's yeah just, no matter what. It's just period. No matter what. And you could and you could be a mediocre director and have a brilliant script and be and and be lauded with flowers and and, yeah. and maybe even yes. win an Oscar. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. But I have seen this rare occasion where a, a, a director has made a horrible movie with a great script. Oh it's yeah, sad. yeah, it's yeah. No, no. A, a director can ruin can ruin good writing. Oh, yes, I certainly I certainly agree with you on tragedy. that. Tragedy, yes. like why they yeah. hand him that, such as giving J.J. Abrams free license to do the Star Wars movies. <laughs> <laughs>